to it, Lord, that others may see what you truly have to offer. And Lord, we just praise you and thank you. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who you sent to be the ultimate sacrifice for us. We may receive our salvation, and we thank you that you made a way for us once again. Lord, we just praise you and thank you. You're a wonderful Father. You're almighty, you're all powerful, all ever loving. We just thank you for your, your touch. Lord, we just want to pray for this nation. Lord, I ask that you would guide those that are heading up this nation, the leaders, Lord. Lord, we know that the they need your guidance in a big way, Lord. Lord, we just come before you and we just ask that you will watch over those that are out serving our country, whether it's the service people overseas or the police officers, Lord. Lord, we ask that you watch over them all. Lord, we know that nothing's too big for you. Lord, we just praise you and thank you. We praise you and thank you that
Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the love, God. Lord, that you never leave us, that you never forsake us. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh 
receive the offering tonight. Ushers, if you would, go ahead and come. Praise the Lord Jesus. How many of you are thankful for what God's been doing in our services so far? Well, that's about three or four of you. How many of you are thankful for what God's doing in our services so far? We've got to be careful never to take it lightly what God does. Never take for granted what God does. What we've seen the last two nights, the people in the altar, the lives that have been touched and changed, that ought to make us want to shout glory to God. Come on, somebody. Thankful to the Lord for what he's doing. And so tonight we're going to wait upon you for the offering. This offering will go again to Extended Hands of God Highway Ministries. And I just pray that you would give. I believe that God will bless you. Father, we thank you tonight for your love, for your mercy and your grace. Lord, I'm asking tonight that you would bless this offering, Lord, that you would bless the one that gives. And God, especially bless the one that cannot give. I pray, Father, that you would meet every need. We thank you for your great and mighty provision. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. skipper over there. <laughs> Little skipper. <laughs> I've tried to think of a story all day long to tell and I just can't come up with one. But when I do, you'll be the first to hear it. <laughs> so can we give Little Skipper a big round of applause?
Kilir gamun. You know, Pastor John was talking about what God's been doing in this revival. And sometimes we wonder if we can really make a difference. If we, who are we? We're not a big time name preacher or not a Sunday school teacher. I might be a plumber, truck driver. We all can reach somebody. And you see the last three nights, the last five years, something that was started by one man and one CD. And God used a James Bourne to leave a CD in a truck stop. God knowing I would come by and pick up that CD. God knowing I would call John English and trick him, I mean, invite him into coming and preaching on our line. Huh? At four in the morning, one CD, one person put out, put it out, and look at every year, lives have been touched, changed. So we all can do something. We can make a difference. We just got to be willing to try. As Curtis is talking all the time, God will bless your efforts. Just make an effort. Amen. I just want to thank everybody. I'm, I'm sad tonight, I'm excited. Man, it seems like we just got started and it's time, it's over. But I'm excited to see what the Lord's gonna do tonight. Oh, yes. I'm excited to hear the message the Lord has laid on Brother Bill's heart. I know you're gonna be blessed tonight. So we're just gonna get started. I wanna say hello to everybody, extended hands of God. And thank you for all that you all do. Appreciate your support. And uh, my sister mentioned my dad last night, and I'm gonna mention him. Daddy, I know you'll be listening. And uh, thank you for taking us kids to church for getting yeah. that seed planted. So thank you. If you know, man, get your kids to church. You might have neighbor kids. You might not have any kids. Your kids are grown. We all know somebody. Bring your kids, neighborhood kids, relatives, bring them to church. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to mention a couple of things that I haven't. Um, I want to encourage everybody to download our mobile app. You know, got it. Just go to your app store, search Extended Hands of God. All our messages and testimonies, everything, sermons, you can listen to those. We also added a, a new thing this year with, it's called Music Blessing, is the category. You can hit that. And my album's on there, Bill Shell, Mike Atkins, Catherine. How many of you heard Catherine sing last night? Yeah, right. Her songs on her album's on there. Uh, Sister Sylvia recorded some songs on there for us. Yeah. So you can listen to that going down the road and stuff. So check it out. And uh, we've got a mailing list out there. Sign up if you want. Uh, we'll send you CDs from time to time. No charge. And uh, what else? And those CDs out there, help yourself. Take some home, share with friends, family. Uh, that's what we brought them for. So anyway, uh, I think it's, we're gonna, uh, I'll tell you what, I think I'll sing one and uh, then we'll get started. I just like singing this song and uh, I'm gonna do it and uh, most of you here probably know it. So you can, uh, I better, speaking of knowing, I better get my words pulled up. <laughs> <clears throat> so, you're ready, brother. So, definitely sing along if you know. I think most of you probably will. Oh, Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk 
Yes, I walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Oh, granted, Jesus is my plea. And daily walking close to thee. Dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is old, well, time for me no more. Guide me gently, sing the old. As I walk, as I walk close to thee. Oh, just a closer walk with It's my belief And they be walking Close to thee Oh, let it be Dear Lord, let it be Amen, hallelujah How many of you heard Catherine last night? Uh, how many were blessed by her? Yes. I got our newest CD here. Who would like to have it? Who was here all three nights? Oh man, Mario. Big John. You already got it. Okay. I'm thinking of a number between one and three. What is it? Who said two first? Come here, sister. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I got a uh, album from Bill Shell here. He's going to be preaching here. We'll be doing some singing too. Hey. And uh, I'm drinking. I'm drinking. Pour me down. I need a glass of that Holy Ghost. Come on. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> Of a number between three and four. Who is it? Three and a half. Bill, you can't have it. Hey! Hey! Way up here. All right. Somebody take that up to Brother Aaron, please. My wife. Sister Pat, come here. You can have the other one. Maybe she'll actually you borrow this sometime. Uh, I got one more book. Sister Janice. Come on here, brother. You, Kim. Come on back. Sister Kim told me she picked it up today and didn't put it down until she was done. So it was an amazing book. So uh, I'm going to bring. Uh, Sister Talise up here, she's going to sing one. Uh, oh, it's raining. Man. Come on up here, Talise. Give Sister Talise a big She experienced God right there. I'm very happy to be here tonight. Um, I feel like, Brother Skip, I'm kind of sad that, that this is the last night, but um, as I can say, it doesn't have to be, 
Because I know what I've experienced, I'm taking that back to Kansas City with me. Amen. So, you guys um, never sang this song ever before. So, um, I listen to it a lot. And um, I just love the words. Um, somebody asked me at work one time how, um, she said, what do you think your purpose is for being here? I said, my purpose is to be, my purpose for being here is to be a light in a dark world. Amen. And she said, I can see that in you. Amen. And that is my desire. I want people, I don't want to have, I don't, I don't want to have, I don't think I have to have Christianity tattooed on my forehead, but I want people to see it through my actions. Um, and I want them to see that light in me. I want them to see Jesus in me. And honestly, that's been a, a prayer of mine ever since I was a kid. And um, you know, everybody's talked about their parents this weekend, and I, I would like to say that I want to thank my mama and my stepdad for raising me in a Christian home. Um, you know, my mom taught me a lot about sharing when it comes to God because you never know whose life you're going to touch. She used to force me to get up in church and sing, and I'd be so scared. My heart would be racing, my knees would be knocking. And she said, when somebody asks you to do a song, you do it because you never know who's going to need to hear that. So I pray that this song will bless you guys tonight. <laughs> Another town, another place, a different crowd, a brand new stage, the spotlight's on me, I get to choose to keep it there. Lord, please, 
and sister. Thank you. Amen. What a statement. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring Sister Wanda up here real quick, and uh, she's going to sing one of my favorites. What are you singing? <laughs> Walk a mile. Walk a mile. I love this song. Come on up here, sister. Wow. <laughs> If anybody knows me and Billy Bob very well, they know we like to go fishing. You know, Jesus liked fishing. Yeah. <laughs> he called on him a lot to follow him. And, you know, we're his hands, we're his feet, we're his voice. And uh, so he liked fishermen. And you go catch the fish. Now, I I catch the fish. I like to catch big ones. And Billy Bob cleans them. Amen. And sometimes Billy Bob cooks them, but, you know, I cook them too. You know, when we're home and just... A few, I'll cook them if there's a big batch. He cooks them. But anyway, this thing along with this song. Uh, we catch the fish. Well, we're supposed to be Jesus' hands and feet. We're supposed to go out into the world and to bring them in. Like, take your children to church. Take your grandchildren to church. If uh, my parents didn't go to church when I was real little, a Sunday school teacher came and picked me and my brother and sister, would she come by on her way to church and pick us up faithfully? Every Sunday she'd pick us up. She planted that seed. So then later in life, I remembered that Jesus loves me. So, and Amen. that's how I come to the Lord about them seeds being planted. And so we're supposed to not judge people, go out there and invite them to church. They may not, you know, not be very lovable, but invite them. You, your job is to love them. To show them Jesus' love, yeah. invite them, bring them to church, and God will take care of the cleaning. Amen. I said, well, you know what? So I had to put in some fishing stuff in there. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> this is called Could You Walk a Mile? <laughs> <clears throat> Cursed him and they kicked him 
as they dragged him down the street. They nailed him to a cross, and soldiers gambled at his feet. And though his heart was broken for all they put him through, he said, Father, please forgive them. They know not what they do. Did you walk a mile in that man's shoes? If you had no choice, tell me how can you choose? Don't be quick to judge till you've been there too stop and think for a while could you walk a mile in that man's shoes stop and think for a while could you walk a mile in that man's before you see. <laughs> I was sitting here and I looked at that and said, what's this? He's take it for one and go. I'll make you some dirt for you. <laughs> Man, that song kind of feels, uh, the last part of that song just kind of fits into what we're getting ready to do. How many are glad he was willing, he willingly went to the cross. Amen. Amen. Brother John's going to come up here and lead us in communion and we'll continue on after that. But yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, of all the times that we've gotten together, uh, the extended hands of God, they're a family that gets together on the conference line. They've become a part of our family. And we decided tonight would be a good time to receive communion together as a family. I'm going to read a scripture here. If the ushers would go ahead and come. A scripture that's in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 20, chapter number 11, verse number 26. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. I want you to hear that again. But let a man examine himself. Not your neighbor, not your spouse, that we examine ourselves. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Tonight as we prepare to serve communion to you, you do not have to be a member of our church, nor do you have to be a member of extended hands of God to receive communion, but you need to be a member of the family of God. And things in your heart needs to be right between you and the Lord. So as we begin to serve, I'm going to ask if you would to take a moment, bow your heart before the Lord and examine yourself. And if there's anything at all between you and God, get it settled tonight. Does anybody say amen? Amen. God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And tonight, the bread that we hold in our hands is a symbolic representation of that broken body. And how many of you are thankful for the broken body of our Lord and Savior? Thank God for the work of Christ at the cross. Thank God he was willing to lay his body down to be wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes that we would receive healing. I've asked Brother Darrell if he would to stand and bless the bread tonight. Sanhedrin didn't put you on the cross. We know the Bible didn't put you on the cross. We know that you were willing, since your son, he was willing to go to the cross for our sins. And to do no sin, but became sin for everyone. And if we have believed in him, we shall have life. We do this in remembrance of your body that was beaten upon the cross of Calvary, blood that was shed. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we eat together? And after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Tonight, the cup we hold in our hand is a representation of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. How many of you are thankful for the blood? Amen. What could wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood. Thank God for the blood. I've asked Brother Wooden, if he would, to stand and bless the cup. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blood of Christ. Washes away our sins past, present, and future. As we partake of this cup, let's not forget the sacrifice you gave to us so that we could have peace with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we drink together? Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. That's always a powerful thing yeah. to take part in that. And it just kind of, <coughs> kind of humbles you a little bit. We're going to move on here. And, uh, I'm going to do a little bragging here tonight. Not on the man, but the God that uses the man. Amen. Bill Shell's going to come up here in a little bit and 
he's going to share with us tonight. Bill has uh, been around the world spreading the gospel. Been all over this country. Lord is using in a great and mighty way. He's been on cruise ships and done tours that way. He told me today that breakfast, some of the food he had to eat on some of these mission trips and everything. Man, I tell you, I don't have any in dream there. But uh, anyway, he's a he's just a good friend. I, you know, last night I was talking about the people God has brought into my life. Man, I'm thankful for this one. Him and his wife, not in it. Give him a round of applause, brother. Bill, come up here. Call him. Let him be blessed. about all the uh, the interesting food that we have had to eat. I can tell you one thing for sure. I know this without any doubt is we've not had any peanuts without the chocolate on them. <laughs> Come on in there. <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> Uh, we just want to have a good time. Is that, all, is that all right? We have anybody come to have a good time? Yeah. Well, all right, let's have a good time. You would have thought that I would have had all this queued up and ready to go, and I and I thought I did until we until we got started. Then I realized I didn't have. But I'm about to have, y'all know this one. Yes, 
Give me another car. Free car. Hold on, touch your ear. I've got to ask, what was your man in the women's restroom again? Okay. Do I hear $10? Ten dollars. <laughs> Somebody's got some keys laying out up here. Why? Well, uh, if you need to know any more information about him, you'll have to talk to Skip. I, I'm not touching it. I'm going to leave it alone. Right where it's at, I'm going to leave it right where I found it. And uh, see, you won't be so glad to ask me back next time, will you? <laughs> We just had a beautiful communion service. Oh, what a special time that it is when we can talk about and think about the, uh, the, the price that Jesus Christ has paid for us. Friend, let me tell you something. We wasn't worthy of one drop of blood. We wasn't. I, I wasn't. I wasn't. And I'm still not, to be real honest with you. He paid a great price. And that's simply what this song says. It goes right just kind of along with that. And I thought, well, we need to grab that for, uh, for, the, for the event here that's going on. The same of a lifetime was now taking place for my life. The takers could be as Satan contended, I have kingdom. To give Then Jesus Just started To be And oh What a Price He paid That I Might go Unworthy Was I
I missed it, but it must have been good. <laughs> All that bluegrass. people involved in the bluegrass industry. We uh, w was at home, and some of you may have heard me share this story before, but but uh, we were at home, and I was, was, was writing for several of the different artists, and God has been so good to us to allow us to do that. And folks, I'm going to tell you right now, I couldn't write you a letter that made any sense. And if I did, I'd misspell at least half of the words, you know. My pet peeve in life is people that can understand there's more than one way to spell a word. Yes, amen. <laughs> Some of y'all got it. <laughs> but I had a studio call me from up in Ohio and they said, we're right in the middle of a brand new bluegrass project. We need some bluegrass material. And I said, well, well good luck in finding it. You're not going to get any here. I mean, I was being honest with him and, and, and telling him. He said, you know, in, in a very abrupt manner, Brother John, he said, you know, he said, you really ought to pray about that. I didn't really see any need in it myself, but he thought I needed to pray about it. So I did. I, I prayed about it. I, you know, when people ask us to pray, that we need to turn our attention to pray. Yes, amen. Amen. Yeah. Take that serious. Uh, and he says, you need to pray about that. And I began to seek the Lord. And the Lord gave me a bluegrass song. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? That's pretty cool. We sent it up to them. And they recorded that thing. And, and they did an awesome job on it. I was very thankful, very blessed in that. And, and old dummy here, I thought, you know what? If they can sing that bluegrass song, I should be able to do that. I've never sung bluegrass in my life. But I thought I would be able to do that. So I work real hard and I'm trying to learn to sing this bluegrass song and get it just right. I listened to what they did and I tried to get it just right. I done the very I thought I was doing okay. Not great, but just okay. Now I was traveling a lot and singing various places. Now, if you're going to try out bluegrass music, 
You need to go, you know, go to Montana. They don't know bluegrass. Dummy goes to Eastern Kentucky. Now those folks know their bluegrass. Let me tell you something. They, you can't get nothing past them. They know it. I get up and I, and I tell them I don't sing bluegrass. And I get up and sing that song. I've done the very best I could do. I sung all the notes just like they did it on that CD, I thought. <laughs> and after church, there was this little blue-haired lady. I'll never forget her. <laughs> she came up from the back of that auditorium, and she came right up to me, and she said, you want a peanut? No, that's not what she said. <laughs> That's not, that's not at all what she said. But I'm, I'm, I was doing okay up until there. It was all right online. I, I made that up. But she came up at me after church and she looked me right square in the eye and said, Honey, you're still not singing bluegrass. <laughs> So I'm still working on it. I'm still trying real hard. Right now it kind of makes me wish I had another one to be honest with you. But uh, we were uh, at home some time ago and the Lord began to deal with us. And, and I'm very serious about this. If God didn't give us a song, we don't get it. I, I can't sit down and write you a song. And, and I wanted a brand new song for tonight, to be real honest with you. And the Lord gave me about half of it, and I don't have it done. And and I really wanted it for tonight. I really did. Sometimes it just don't work out that way, you know. But God gives us word in 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 the word. And he gives us a word in the song to speak to us and encourage us or to help us through difficult times, or to point us to Jesus in the time of difficulty. I was at home and God began to deal with us and, and uh, he gave me a brand new song. And I thought, you know what? I know exactly who that's for. Songs have messages in them. Y'all already know that. You, you, you pick up on that. You know that for sure. Different songs speak to you. And, and I, I got this new song and I thought, you know what, I, I know exactly who that's for, Lord. You've given it to us for them and, and we'll be able to share that with them and maybe encourage them just a little bit. I didn't realize what was in store in our world. I didn't know that within the next hours, our world would be completely turned upside down. And God knew that I was going to need to hear the words that he was giving us on this occasion. The song is entitled, I'll Pray For You. Yeah. Now folks, let me tell you something. When we tell somebody that we will pray for them, we need to be praying for them. Right. We got a call, we was at home. When were we home? When were we home, Donetta, when, when the phone rang? Then it's been the last few days before we came to Missouri this trip out. And a young man in the area where we, not far from where we live, they had taken him to the hospital with a brain bleed, Brother Skip. And they, they called my wife and, and said, will you please pray for him? Now, a, a brain bleed is very serious issue. You know that. And my grandson was there and he was, he was picking up in our yard for us and, and we stopped him and said, come here. Uh, we, we, we have got something we must do. And we told him the story of what was going on and, and how that we needed to stop and pray. And our prayer was that, that the Lord would heal him 
And that even when they got him to the hospital, that the brain bleed, say that ten times real fast, and it's not working for me, but that the brain bleed would stop. And that they would even send him back home. And it was about 11.30 that night that we got the text that came from the family. And they said, you know, when we got him to the hospital, they took him in and they'd done their testing. And then they sent him home. They said he just needs to follow up with his doctor. See, when somebody calls and says, Pray for us. We don't know the battle that they're fighting or what's going on. But we need to be instant to call that name before the Lord. We were given the song just a couple of days before our world completely turned upside down. Some of you know what's going on in our world and some of you don't. And that's okay. It doesn't matter that you don't. But God began to speak to us about this song. I recorded the song in the studio on a Thursday. I believe it was a Thursday. I recorded the song in the studio. And on Saturday, my five-year-old grandson. Was taken away to live with the Lord. My three-year-old granddaughter was left paralyzed from the chest down. But the Lord had already began to speak. He did the song. I'm going to do this. And then Russ, I'm going to share the word.
I'm sure he would be glad to share that with you again tonight before you leave here. So I'll leave it alone right there. I'll get off of that. But I began to seek the Lord about what he would have us to share with the church when we came. A revival meeting this week, and, and uh, we've heard some, some wonderful, encouraging words. Brother Curtis did a great job in, in sharing with us the victory of the Lord, and, and we were, were privileged to, to, to be... Uh, in, in service with Brother Curtis, another great warrior for the kingdom, I'm telling you. Love him and appreciate him. And then we heard Brother Skip last night, and, and, and I thought, what are we going to share? And I thought about this very thought. About two weeks ago, the Lord spoke to us and said, this is what you're going to share in Springfield at the church in the revival. And this is what it's going to be. You're going to get up and announce, here comes Jesus. Amen. I thought, my, here comes Jesus. What does that mean to us? What does the scriptures reveal to us regarding this issue of here comes Jesus. Now I'm going to share with you tonight 
probably quite a bit of scripture. I'm not going to do a lot of turning there. I've got much of it written down to where that I won't take up a lot of your time. Now, uh, if you come to hear a long message, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to have to listen fast because I don't preach long. I, I knew that would get a shout from somebody. So listen real fast. But I began to look in the scripture at what this thought means. And I turned over to the book of Isaiah. This is where we're going to take our scripture thought from. But I want to go back here and give you some history to where we're going tonight with this. In the book of Isaiah, in chapter number 7 and verse number 14, this is what it says. It says, Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the scripture says. I looked at that word behold today as I was in the, in the hotel room and trying to get things finished up for tonight. And I, I looked at that word behold as it's there in the scripture. And right out behind it, in parentheses, I put this in where I could understand what it's saying as he is announcing, behold, what he is saying to us is pay attention here. Listen to what I've got to say. And this is what the word says. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and call his name Emmanuel. Now, I want to stop right now and let's pray that God will bless this word tonight. Yes. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word. Yes. We got important word now. The word says, behold, we're going to pay attention. And Father, we're expecting you to do something with your word this night as we are looking for Jesus. Show us in the word the realities of of the coming of Christ and what he is able to do. We're going to claim victory this night. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people says, Amen. Amen. If you find that scripture that we've just been talking about, you're going to see that he begins to refer to the word Emmanuel. That's not accidental. I'm going to tell you something. I found this out today as I began to read about this and, and look at it just a little bit. The word Emmanuel means, as you know this already, God with us. So it's saying this, 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 this conception that's taken place, this, this event that, that, that man's got nothing to do with, that is taking place, is going to bring Emmanuel, God, into the presence of man. Now we know that that name only appears twice in the Scripture. It appears where we read it from just a moment ago there in the book of Isaiah in 7.14. It also appears in Isaiah 8 and verse 10. And, and I, I've not missed it. I've checked this out in, in detail. And they are spelling it I-M-M-A-N-U-E-L, Emmanuel. And that is the only two places in the scripture where that name is used under that spelling. But I just turned over uh, again and I looked in the scripture in Matthew's gospel and 1 and 23 and we can see that name Emmanuel is turning up again but it is spelled differently. Had you noticed that before? It's very real. It's there. It's true. That's just a side note to where we're going. But we can see in Isaiah that there was a prophetic word that was being spoken and that, that there was a, 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 a Messiah coming. There was Jesus that was going to be born. This was prophetic word of some approximately 650 to 700 years prior to the birth of Jesus. We're getting the prophetic word that he is coming. And since that day, since that hour that Isaiah began to prophesy, we can see that Israel was living in an hour of anticipation. They know that something big is getting ready to take place. Something big is going on. Because the scripture identifies this coming event
tent of Jesus. And all of this time, as they waited, and as uh, as they anticipated, is this going to be the day? Is this going to be the time? Is this going to be the hour? We know that He's coming because the Word says we can see that time continued to pass. We can see that uh, society continued to deteriorate. And we can see that troubles abounded. Boy, doesn't that sound funny? Doesn't that sound like today's news instead of news some 2,500 plus years ago? But they were waiting for the coming of the Christ and then something extraordinary happened. And I thought, Lord, I can't use this passage of text. They'll think that I've messed up and we're getting ready for Easter and I'm going back to preach a Christmas message. I'm kind of goofy like that. But I thought I can't share that. But the Lord says, yes, you can because that's where I want you to go. And I read over in the book of Matthew in chapter number 1 and verse number 18. And this is what it says. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Now see, they had anticipated for hundreds of years and here is something taking place. The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus and he shall save the people from their sins and I can imagine that Joseph went down the street yelling here comes Jesus I can imagine what was taking place as people began to acknowledge that this extraordinary event was coming to place the, in the place, the one that had been anticipated, the one that was long awaited, had finally come. Now, I want to call your attention to something that we're going to come back to several times through this hour. I look at this and I can see that as Jesus has came, as they have announced that he's coming, one of the things that we see in him is that he is coming for a purpose. And I want you to rest assured tonight that that purpose still exists. It wasn't that just something happened 2,000 years ago, but Jesus, as a matter of fact, he came for a purpose, and that purpose is to make a difference in the lives of every individual. To make a difference in our life. I'm going to tell you something. He sure has made a difference in my life. I'm going to tell you I'm not who I used to be. I'm not the, uh, Joel Hemphill, uh, a man of God, a great writer of the song. Joe began to pin the song. He's still working on me. Thank God he's still working on this old boy. And I sure do need it. But I'm not what I used to be. I'm not the one that, that I was. I was lost and undone without Christ. And Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. That was me. And my life has changed because of the coming of Jesus. Every one of us, the scripture identifies, have sinned. And we've come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. 
We can't point a finger at somebody and say, well, you're worse than I am. Oh, you're, a lot, you're a lot worse off. Uh, Brother Greg, we can't point our finger at somebody and say that. You know what? It doesn't work. Because the Word says that we're all in that category. We've everyone had sinned and come short of the glory of God. Therefore, Jesus come with us in mind. He came. We were a part of His purpose. And He still in it today reaches out to every one of us even though, even though we have been sinners. Now, tonight, I want you to go with me, and I'll make this real quick, I promise. But I want you to go with me in the Scripture, because I want to point out some things that is very, very important, I feel. I want us to walk through the Scripture, just a few pages of them, and let's see if He has stayed true to the purpose that He came for. Let's identify very clearly in the Word. I looked over in the book of Matthew, chapter number 3, and I first see that John is in the River Jordan, and he's back. Baptizing. You know that story. We can see that he's out there baptizing in the river of Jordan and he's preaching the message of repentance. And, he's, and, and for all who will renounce sin, he is providing the baptism there in the water in the river of Jordan. And he was addressing the crowd with great boldness and proclaiming to them that they must leave their sin behind and turn to God. And then we see Jesus. We see him coming down that dusty pathway. He didn't have a concrete sidewalk to walk upon. He didn't have an asphalt street to travel down. But we see Jesus as he's coming through. Maybe maybe even the brawlers and the bushes. I don't know. But we can see him as he's coming down that pathway. Making his way to the river of Jordan. And when he gets there. He requests that he too would be baptized by John in the river of Jordan. And we can see that there is some, if you read that passage of Scripture, there's a great amount of discussion that's taking place between John and Jesus and, and, and a very serious discussion. I'm going to tell you something. I've had some of those very serious discussions with the Lord. And you know what? Even more importantly, He's had some of them with me. And we can see that they are there. And then he walked into the water and John baptized him just like the plan had came to, to, uh, uh, to reveal to us. But when Jesus was baptized, the Word says that the heavens opened up unto Him so John could see into the glory of the Lord. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And it came and it landed upon Jesus. And they heard a voice from heaven saying, Here comes Jesus. Amen. Now that's not what He said, but that's essentially where it's going. This is what it actually said. He said, and they heard the voice coming from heaven. And the word is, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Here comes Jesus. We look at that. And we can see that without hesitation. That the ministry has began for Jesus. The work that he's going to do. I then turned over and I saw just in a few more pages in the book of Luke in chapter number 4 and verse number 18 that Jesus begins to declare to the people this is the word that he says. Now let me back up just a moment. We can see that over here when the baptism took place at the river of Jordan that they saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon Jesus here in the book of Luke. Luke in chapter number 4 this is what Jesus himself said the spirit of the Lord is upon me Amen. we're talking about the same spirit that came down that came down on that day of baptism it's the Holy Spirit of God that came down and he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach 
preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those that are bruised. Jesus is, 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 is declaring his ministry is going to be. So the purpose that Jesus came for has now been declared in full. We can begin to pick that apart and look at it if you want to. Uh, but we'll hurry on for time's sake. But if you notice, he left absolutely nothing out. I guarantee you that everybody in this room, every one of us in this room, if we start looking in that mission statement that Jesus has made, you're going to find that we fit into that category, maybe in more than one of those categories. And the intent of Jesus is to get right into the middle of our life and and transform us into, uh, into a child of God. Transform us into being the spiritual person that he would have us to be. And the scripture bears absolute record of that. There's, there's no question about it. I turn on over into the book of Mark in chapter number 10 and I begin to read one of my favorite passages of, script, uh, of Scripture. But I look down as Jesus was walking into Jericho. You know this story. I have no doubt in my mind about it. We can see that there was a crowd that had gathered in Jericho and here come Jesus winding down the little streets of Jericho. And as He walked into the midst of them, we can see that someone began to announce the great word. Here comes Jesus. He is, he is in our presence. Here comes Jesus into our community, into our church, into our home. Here comes Jesus. And we need to know that. And sure enough, Jesus was there. And you know what he was doing there? He was on a mission. He was on a mission to find that one that was hurting. To find that one that was lost. To find that one that was struggling. To find the way. To find that one that was broken down and in despair. And couldn't go on their own longer. He was on a mission. And you know what? He found that very one that he was looking for as he came into that town. The Word says that he encountered Bartimaeus. And the Word says blind Bartimaeus. Uh, they found blind Bartimaeus standing by the highway side. And as the crowd cried out, here comes Jesus. And Bartimaeus cried out, oh Jesus, would you stop and help me? And Jesus would say, yes, I'm on a mission. What do you need, Bartimaeus? And Bartimaeus began to tell Jesus what he needed that day. And Jesus opened his blinded eyes. And you know what? Things changed in Bartimaeus' world. He no longer was called blind Bartimaeus. Ah, no. They didn't call him blind Bartimaeus any longer because Jesus had opened those blinded eyes and now Bartimaeus could see. See, Jesus came on a mission and He fulfilled it to the letter as He got there. I looked on and I, I looked over in the book of John chapter number 11 and I can see that Jesus had received news that there was a situation that was going on down in Bethany. Somebody had let him know that, that, that they had problems over in Bethany and they needed him to come just as soon as he could get there. And as soon as Jesus arrived in Bethany, he made his way to the home of Mary and Martha. You know that story too, don't you? It's very familiar to us. But he made his way to their home. 
And understandably, he found them in the room and he found the neighbors that were there with them as their heart was breaking because they had just lost to death the brother Lazarus. And then somebody in that crowd stood up and they announced to Mary and Martha who had the broken heart, somebody stood up and boldly proclaimed and they said, here comes Jesus. And you know what they knew? They knew that when Jesus came upon the scene that something was going to be different. Something was going to happen. And, and I want you to know that was a welcoming sound to Mary and Martha when they heard that Jesus was coming. When Jesus was on the way and in the midst. They knew that he would know what to do. Oh, do we know that today? Do we know that today? That Jesus knows what to do in our circumstance. I'm encouraged when I look at the word and I can see that when Jesus, when he talked to Mary and Martha, it wasn't long till he began to share with them that they could have renewed hope in him that all was not lost. And I saw Jesus in the Word as He goes out, as He goes out to the tomb where it was that Lazarus was laid. And He stood before that tomb and He began to cry, Lazarus, come forth. And the Word says that Lazarus came forth. He came forth. Don't you know that Lazarus too was, was, was thoroughly grateful to hear those wonderful words as somebody announced, here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. See, and the people were excited because they were seeing things happen. Now let me tell you something. You want to see a church get stirred up? You let Jesus show up. And you let him begin to work in the midst. Amen. And you let him transform lives. On, and transform families. Yes. And turn hopeless, hopelessness into hope. Yes. You let Jesus show up. And I'm going to tell you something. People will get excited in the church when Jesus shows up. And if we don't get excited in the church when Jesus shows up, honey, we need to get excited when Jesus shows up. Yeah. Yeah. The people were excited. They were seeing things happen. But then you know what happened? Somebody got the brilliant idea. He's in the way. Somebody got the brilliant idea. We don't need Jesus. They got the brilliant idea that we don't need to know about his teachings. We don't even need to proclaim that he's the only way. So we can, we can do away with Jesus. We can even do away with the church for that matter. We don't need it either. And those Christians... And the Word says... They crucified him. Y'all know that happened. It's in the scripture. This prophesied Messiah. This Savior of the world. This good doer of deeds. This one who cares about mankind. This giver of life. Was truly Christ. 
crucified on the tree. Life's blood was spilled. Totally. Was crucified. The word says that he was wrapped up in grave cloth. And they took him, and when they took him from that from that cross and they wrapped him in the grave cloth, and they took him down to the tomb that was in the side of the hill. And they placed him inside. Some of them said, we showed him. Some of them said, that's the end of that. We don't have to worry about that anymore. But on the third day, on the third day, the ground began to tremble. On the third day, the ground began to tremble and the stone, it rolled away. And the angel stood outside of the tomb and they declared, Here comes Jesus! We looked. And we saw Jesus in Acts chapter 1. And in verse number 11, we're seeing the resurrected Lord, the one that had been crucified, the one that had been laid in the grave, the one that the world had given up upon. But we're seeing this resurrected Lord that the angel announced, here comes Jesus. We are seeing them there with his disciples and we are identified that he is taken up into the clouds. And, and, and we have the promise that is given to us in that very same scripture in verse number 11. It says this very same Jesus that's taken up in the clouds will in like fashion come back again. Yes. So folks, I'm going to tell you something. In this day in which we live, the mission of Jesus Christ has not changed. But we are living again in a time of anticipation. Just like Israel lived in anticipation many years before. We today are living in a time of anticipation. And we are waiting for Jesus to come back just And the word says this in getting ready to close right away. Revelations chapter 1 and verse number 7. This is what the word says. It says, behold, there again, I've got those parentheses marks there. And it says, pay attention because I'm fixing to say something that's important. He's saying, behold, he cometh with clouds and air. I shall see him. And tonight I will tell you that I can announce to you unquestionably. Unquestionably. I can announce to you this night. Here comes Jesus. Jesus is coming on a mission. He's coming to meet your needs. And your needs. And your needs. And your needs. Your needs. He's come to 
resurrect the dead and give them new life. The dead and trespasses of sin can be dealt with in this room tonight. You may never have known Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let me tell you something tonight. If you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you are spiritually dead and you are headed for an eternity in hell. This night, Jesus Christ has came. Here comes Jesus. He has came that you might have new life and that you might have promise of everlasting life in heaven with Him. He is, he is on a mission tonight for those that are in this place that are broken hearted. You may have things going on in your life where your heart is broken and you don't feel like that you can face another day. I'm going to tell you this Jesus that has came on the mission to heal the broken hearted is here tonight to, to touch your life and to heal the broken heartedness that you are going on. Now you may be discouraged tonight and feel like that life is not worth living, but Jesus come to speak new life that is worth living. Yes. So it's our needs that He came for. Amen. It is our needs that Jesus stood and proclaimed, this is why I'm coming. Now let me ask you something tonight. Do we have needs? Do we have needs? Yeah. Who's going to meet them? I can't. Yeah. I wish I could. I can't. Brother Skip, can you meet their needs? And I dare say that Brother John will say, he can't meet your needs either. But Jesus can. Yes. Yeah. So tonight we would invite you to trust him. We would invite you to hear the message of here comes Jesus and He's coming for you. He wants to come into your life, into your situation and to make a difference with whatever you're dealing with even at this moment. Stand with us. Tonight, we are going to invite you to come. We're going to invite you to come. And this night, trust Jesus. Will you do it? Will you do it? You may have came tonight feeling about as low as low can get. You may have came tonight wondering, will life ever be better? Well, my friend, life can get better right now. Amen. Because here comes Jesus. Amen. And he's coming just for you and I. The needs that we have. So we would invite you this night to come. Brother Skip, I want you to come up here. Maybe there's somebody like to come and pray. Somebody after a meeting. Brother Curtis, come, would you please? These men are here to, to meet you. Brother John, would you come up here, please? These men are right here. And as much as they would like to meet your needs, they can't. But I can assure you, Heads bowed, eyes closed, just, just for a moment. God dealing with hearts in this room. Maybe there's somebody that's never accepted Christ as a personal Savior. Now there's nobody looking around. Would you right now slip your hand up and say, pray for me? Is there one? Is there one? God bless you. Someone else. Now, let me ask you. There's another. Yes. What are you waiting for? Come on. What are you waiting for? The Lord loves you. Yes. The Lord loves you. And He wants to do something good for you this night. Would you come? Come on right now. 
Maybe there's those that's dealing with discouragement. God wants to do something good for you. That's why I said Jesus. Would you come? Would you come? There's those that's looking for direction in life. anticipate any longer. You don't have to wonder will things ever get better? <laughs> it can get better tonight. Will you come? Maybe there's someone that's hurting. great physician says come so will you come will you come here comes Jesus here comes Jesus will you go to meet him will you go to meet him will you reach out say here I am Lord I heard you were passing by don't pass me by. I heard you were in the house. I heard you were doing great things. Don't leave me out. Will you come? Will you come? We can proclaim loudly. Here comes Jesus. And oh, my friend, if we refuse to hear, then we've missed it. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? I know what's going on. 